You know, many of us, we carry uh, moments, experiences that are simply unforgettable. I'll never forget the day that I fell off of a roof 17 feet and broke three bones in my foot. And two weeks later, I was scheduled for a surgery. That morning, I went through the surgery. And when I woke up, I woke to airplanes crashing into the World Trade Center. I'll never forget that. It's just simply unforgettable. But for the child of God, there should be something that we carry with us all the time, always. And that is the crucifixion of Jesus. And over this last week, as I've delved into scriptures and began to read the accounts of what took place in the book of John, in the book of Matthew, you know, when you read these accounts, there's there's a brokenness that begins to take place on the inside of you. It's, it's being sensitive uh, to what the Lord Jesus had endured for us. And it reminds me of when Jesus had spoken to the Pharisees and he told them that they were like the, well, he actually quoted a scripture, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, Jesus being the stone, they being the builders, um, and they had rejected him and he had become the chief cornerstone. And he said this phrase that whoever falls upon this rock or whoever falls upon this stone will be broken. And there's something about coming to Jesus, the rock that is higher than I, that is higher than us, and falling upon that rock and allowing it to, to wound you, so to speak. You know, this is a time where we're celebrating, some would call it Easter. I like to call it Resurrection. Resurrection Sunday, we're going to experience here on the 9th of April here in 2023. And it's a time where we remember what Jesus has done for us. And so in order to have a resurrection, you have to experience the cross. The cross is something that is so profound and it is something that is proclaimed. There is power in the preaching of the cross. People are saved through the preaching of the cross because it represents the greatest sacrifice. It represents the very love that God had. You know, God loved the world so much that he gave his son. So he, he proved his love towards us in giving us the one and only, but the begotten son of God to come and lay down his life for our sakes. You know, and it, and it was something epic that took place this week as I begin to read these accounts of what Jesus endured even in the garden of Gethsemane at the Mount of Olives for you and I. Something very powerful took place. The Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin for us. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane and he's alone. He's, he's on his face before God the Father. He's crying out. He knew what he was about to endure, this, this cup of suffering that he was going to endure. This was a Thursday night. And the Bible says that he became sin. Think about every vile sin that has ever been committed on the planet. Think about the genocide that's taking place by governments all around the world. You think about sodomy. You think about murder. You think about all these vile things. Jesus became sin and the weight of the world's sin was upon him. And he felt that Weight. He felt the heaviness of that, of, of every sin that every human being has ever committed. And the Bible says that he began to sweat drops of blood. It, it came from his pores and fell to the ground. This, this was something that he carried. He, you know, the Bible says that he took our, our guilt, he took our shame, he took our iniquity, he took our sin upon himself. And that night was the start of something that you know, Jesus would endure. Mel Gibson created a movie called The Passion of the Christ. 
and and Jesus, he passionately pursued us by enduring this suffering that took place. He was betrayed by one of his own. They came to him, and even though Jesus was innocent, even though he was he was perfect, he had never sinned. You know, he was arrested and taken to trial, and they pronounced him guilty, deserving of the death penalty. They beat on Jesus with their fists. They blindfolded him and would hit him repeatedly and say, hey, if you're the son of God, prophesy who just hit you. And you know, Jesus, he endured what is called a scourging. He went before Pilate. He went before Antipas. They couldn't find anything wrong with him. But in order to appease the crowd, Pilate had sentenced him to be scourged and to be crucified. To be scourged, this was something that was reserved only for slaves and trade traders. Roman citizens, they would not be crucified. Why? Because it was the most inhumane way of being tortured, being punished. And Jesus was scourged on that day by two Roman legionnaires. These were professionals that took Jesus, nailed him, uh, sorry, tied him to a whipping post, stripped him naked, and from the top of his back all the way down to the back of his legs, they beat him. There was, they, they used this, what is called the cat of nine tails. It has bone fragments, and it would have ripped off his back, pieces, chunks of his back. He would have needed 2,000 stitches to mend all those wounds. Jesus would have been completely unrecognizable. And then, of course, they made Jesus carry his own cross, and he could only do that uh, partial way. Imagine carrying a cross over a hundred pounds on your back that had just been beaten with 39 lashes. He went up that hill to Golgotha and he was nailed to the cross. And he hung there naked for the world to see in shame and humiliation. And we know that he died on that hill. You know, the most excruciating part for Jesus was the moment that the Father had looked away. Jesus cried out, Father, why have you forsaken me? In that moment, the Father couldn't even look at him and had to abandon him in that moment as Jesus received the punishment the penalty for what you and I have done. Then he breathed his last breath. He died for us, for all of humanity. This is something that we as children of God, we have to be careful that we don't become numb to these things because you know it, it's got to be something that we carry with us. Whenever we carry the death, of Christ with us, then we know that the life of the resurrection will flow in and through us. This is what Paul encouraged us to embrace what Jesus did on the cross, that death, so that we could walk in resurrection life. You know what happened there on the cross? The story doesn't end there. There was a resurrection, a resurrection of the very Son of God. You know, the resurrection isn't preached much in pulpits around the world, but this was the foundation and the basis of what the early church apostles had preached. It is a part of the apostolic gospel. As a matter of fact, Jude, uh, Judas, who had betrayed Jesus, when he hung himself, when he took his own life, and the apostles later on went to appoint another apostle in his stead, in his place. They said, let's choose someone 
that was a witness to the resurrection. Jesus was the first fruits of those who are resurrected from the dead. And we've got to get this on the inside of us. Listen, when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says that the ground began to shake. There was an earthquake and the Roman centurion, the Roman official, along with all his soldiers, as the ground shook, they said, truly, without a doubt, this is the Son of God. And the Bible says that back in the temple, that there was a veil that, that separated it brought a separation. And that, that veil was the Holy of Holies where God dwelled. And it ripped it in two. It tore in two in the presence of God. God came out of that Holy of Holies. And he was looking for some, he was looking for another temple to fill. That temple is those of us that have resurrected. We've been resurrected from the dead through the born again experience. Listen, Jesus rising from the dead it means so much talk about a powerful event his followers the women followers as they went out on sunday morning to go to the tomb where jesus had been laying and just laying there when they went there all of a sudden the earth began to quake again and an angel removed the stone that had covered up the tomb and when these women went in there there was two angels that appeared to them and said, why are you looking for uh, uh, those that are alive among the dead? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is alive. And the Bible says that when Jesus rose from the dead, that the graves of the Old Testament saints, they were opened up. And the Old Testament saints went out and they began to walk around that old city, Jerusalem. They begin to testify and witness that Jesus Christ beat death, hell, and the grave. He got the keys. Listen, it's so important that you and I, we get a revelation of the resurrection of the dead, that Jesus is alive. Because, because He is alive, that means everything else that He said was true. Everything else that He said was true. And he said that you and I, we would rise from the dead as well. So we no longer have to fear death. You don't have to fear death. You know, with the church shutting down the way it did over the past three years, much of the church, our churches didn't shut down, you know, but many churches that they shut down and they waited for the government to tell them when they can open back up. Why? Because they were afraid of death. Well, guess what? Jesus gave the devil, he, he whooped him, he whooped him and he got the keys of Hades and the keys of death so that we no longer have to be in bondage and fear of dying. Listen, this life we're just passing through. The next life, the spirit world is the real world. And so we've got to get a revelation on the inside of us of the resurrection of the dead. Because when you begin to have that revelation, you will not fear man. You will not fear what people can do to you. Jesus instilled in his disciples to not fear men. And when we'll do that, we'll be like Peter. Do you know they sought out Peter to take his life? And the church was... You know, so concerned about Peter. They said, listen, why don't you just leave town? Get out of town. They're coming to make a martyr out of you. And he didn't want to, you know, leave. But the church said, come on, get out of town. You can continue to preach and leave the church. And so it is said that Peter, as he walked out of town, that he encountered Jesus. And he said, where are you going, Jesus? So Jesus appeared to him. He appeared to him and he said, I have come again to be crucified. And what he meant by that was not that he personally would be crucified, but that Peter, Peter would be crucified in his stead. He would be crucified. He would give his life and be a witness to that generation that Jesus is alive.
If you'll begin to have a revelation, a revelation of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it becomes your resurrection from the dead. I want to wish you a happy resurrection day and that you would walk in resurrection life. I pray that the life and the DNA of God would fill you up today and saturate your life and you would no longer fear men, but you will walk in the fear of God. Hey there, I want to thank you so much for watching these videos. If you have been enjoying the content produced here, then I want to encourage you to prayerfully consider supporting this ministry, especially in 2023. We're looking for more partners to come alongside of us and support this ministry. The easiest way to do that is to go to our website, jeremyfontenot.com forward slash give, and you'll find several ways to give there. You can give via tithe.ly, or if you want to give, uh, send a check in by mail, please make it out to Revival Missions. That's P.O. Box 546, Jonesboro, Louisiana, 71251. Or you can give via PayPal. Just go to paypal.me forward slash Revival Missions. Again, thank you so much for watching these videos. We love you here at Revival Missions, and we pray that this will be your greatest year ever.